In Europe's far north, the Sami people of Sweden and Finland are fighting to protect pristine natural habitats and an age-old way of life from the consequences of mining, pollution and profit-hungry big business. So will global demand for raw materials yet again take precedence over the environment, or can one of Europe's last wildernesses be saved? The far north of Europe, a place of extraordinary beauty, home to an astonishing array of plants and animals, which have survived largely thanks to the indigenous people of this area, the Sami. To this day, many Sami follow herds of free-roaming reindeer, maintaining a tradition that has helped preserve their ancient environment. But in recent years, a new species has arrived, the multinational. And as this video shows, the floodgates are open and mining companies are being invited to Europe's far north to exploit its riches. Right across Lapland, a way of life is being pushed to the brink. Every winter, Vast herds of reindeer descend from the Scandinavian mountains to their winter pastures in the Jokmak region of Sweden, just above the Arctic Circle. Thousands of animals converge under the watchful eyes of their Sami herders. It's a pattern unchanged for centuries, which now hangs in the balance. British company Beerwolf Mining plans to build a giant open pit iron ore mine right in the middle of their winter pasture. According to environmentalists, one of Europe's last true wildernesses could be destroyed and a way of life lost forever. It's autumn and the reindeer have been gathered in corrals. The summer culture is very close linked to the reindeer and the reindeer herding. We've been here for a very long time. And the reindeers, they're actually, they have formed this landscape. Our biggest fear is that a mine would effectively cut off our migrating towards our, our winter pastures. And also uh, the mine itself and uh, the infrastructure is actually where we are, have our part of our reindeers in the winter time. The mine also threatens the status of the Laponia National Park, a world heritage site close by. For this is where the reindeer spent half the year. And according to UNESCO, Laponia was awarded world heritage status because it is unquestionably the largest and best preserved area of transhumance. The seasonal movement of people with their livestock between fixed summer and winter pastures. Beowulf has been test drilling in the area for several years. The company chairman is less than enthusiastic about reindeer herding. What is the potential for growth in reindeer herding? Will this go ahead and employ hundreds more people? No. No, it won't. Will mining? Yes, it will. In the regional capital of Jokmuk, the mine has become a divisive issue. At a time of austerity, it is seen as a cash cow and a source of jobs by the government, which seems determined to push ahead regardless of the concerns of the reindeer herders, although politicians say they take environmental issues very seriously. You have two sides of this, because a lot of people in this, this area are also positive to mining and this, the most of the Sami people is, is negative to mining. You can't say yes to mining if you know that it hurts the Laponia area. 
you also have to, to prove that you also in the future can keep rainers passing through. I asked the governor if he thought it would be difficult for the Sami to oppose the mine. Of course, there's a lot of money in the area, and, and you know what money talks. <laughs> but it's not just the reindeer herders who oppose Beowulf. This is the village of Björkholmen, just two kilometers from the proposed mine. If it goes into production, 140 million tons of ore will be extracted right by the village's water supply. We have clean water here. We can drink the water in the lake and not many places in Sweden we can drink from the lake. I am very sad and all in Bjarkholm and all people in Bjarkholm are sad because they don't want to have a mine here. Locals are fearful not least because of comments made by Beowulf's chairman at a mining conference in Stockholm two years ago, in which he appears to deny the existence of people like Mrs. Forsberg. I show this, this slide primarily to people in the UK and Ireland, because one of the big, one of the major questions I get is, what are the local people going to go ahead and say about this project? And I show them this picture and I say, what local people? This summer, Environmentalists from across Scandinavia converged on Jokmuk to try to stop Beowulf from drilling by blockading the access road to the drill site. I came here because uh, people all over the planet are destroying nature and the wilderness and uh, our ability to survive in the long run on this planet. And people in the area living around this proposed mine is not really happy about it. And uh, really appreciate that we come here and came with supplies and came with food and things we needed for the camp and we're really supportive. <laughs> a standoff lasting two months came to a head when police moved in, dragging protesters and locals away and demolishing a tower erected at the camp while protesters were still on it. Much of this was filmed by a local Sami. I knew that the police was on its way, and I, I thought it was important to be there and see what's happened. The worst thing that stuck me in my heart it was when they bring away an old Sami reindeer herder. He is 85 years old, and when the police grabbed him and led him away, I went very emotional. I got tears in my eyes because this is a guy that has fought in all his life against the timber extracting and all the other things that has happened in our lands. The Swedish government, they are showing that they are just waiting for, for the mining company to knock on the door. And, 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 and then the Swedish government opens the doors and say, hey, we have minerals, come here and bring it out. And we will help you to take away Sami people who want to live in this area that they have done in, from the Ice Age. We do have a problem with the Sami organization in the fact they basically say no to everything, to everything. So it's very difficult to have a dialogue when the other side of the table says no to everything. Perhaps a glimpse of what's in store for the region can be had a hundred miles north at Kiruna, Sweden's northernmost city. This is the site of Europe's largest iron ore mine. Every day, thousands of tons of ore are dug up, loaded onto trains and carried to the port of Norvik to be shipped abroad. It generates millions for the government. There's just one problem. The mine has caused a fissure to open up, and as mining continues, the fissure is spreading towards the city. As extraordinary as it sounds, the entire city has got to be moved. Kiruna is also an important Sami cultural center. There is even a Sami theater, one of only two in Sweden. 
we all need culture. And a Sami theater makes it possible for the Samis to raise their voices in a way we probably couldn't have raised them if we didn't have the theater. Sadly, this may well be one of the last plays to be performed here. For like everything else in Kiruna, the theater will have to go. It's weirder to move a city than to go to the moon. It's all about the money. And they don't care who it's affecting. And I think it will affect more than, than people probably realize. OK, you can move a house, but what about the land? What happens to that land? What happens to the lakes, to the mountains? I just can't get a grip of it. It's not just Sweden. Much of Europe's far north is being turned over to mining companies. Right across Scandinavia, from Norway to Finland. This is Euro mining, a trade fair in Tompre, Finland's second city. Today in Finland we have 41 mines and this mining sector has been growing steadily for the last five or six years. And we in the Finnish government, we have great expectations that mining is one of the growth areas also in future in Finland. The total turnover of our mining companies is almost 2 billion euros. So at this moment it is vital. Finland's biggest mining company is Tolvivar, whose chief executive gave a keynote address at the fair. What's been lacking and is still lacking in Western Europe is our own minerals and sources for metals. And uh, particularly now, say, for instance, uranium. It's uh, uh, Europe, we have in Europe, there's, uh, I guess, hundreds of uh, uh, nuclear power plants which have to supply their uranium from uh, uh, outside Europe. And, and uh, in this volatile world, I, I think it would be safer to have our own source for the, the, the uh, nuclear power. This is Tolvivar nickel mine. The ore in the ground is of such low grade that vast quantities of rock have to be dug up and crushed in order to remove a relatively small amount of nickel. The crushed rock is stacked into immense heaps 1.2 kilometers long. The metal is extracted by a process which combines natural bacteria with enormous quantities of chemicals. Last year, Tolvivar consumed 762,000 tons of chemicals, a third of which was sulfuric acid. Other potentially profitable metals are also present in the rock like zinc and uranium. At the planning stage, there was no talk of mining uranium. But to the alarm of many local people, a uranium processing plant has already been built. It is the biggest uranium ore in, in, in Finland. Uh, so it has been listed by International Atomic uh, Energy uh, Organization and uh, so on. But when uh, Talvevara apply and received it, its mining permits and uranium was not mentioned at all. According to Professor Sarnisto, one of Finland's leading scientists, when rock which contains uranium is broken up, radiation exposure increases dramatically. I have seen calculations something like 85% of radiation, radi radioactive material will remain in tailings in, in, in the mine when the uranium ore has been taken away because you never can take everything. Most of the material is left in, 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 in the mine. So we have, this is a big risk. The gypsum pond at Talvivar is a giant storage area where the mine's toxic waste is supposed to be stored safely. Last November, cracks appeared in the dam wall and Professor Sonestay's fear became a reality.
emergency workers were drafted in to saturate the area with lime in an attempt to contain what would become Finland's biggest environmental disaster. The accident sent shockwaves throughout Scandinavia, not least to the Sami in Sweden, which in recent years has seen a uranium prospecting boom. At first, the company denied there was a problem. Nevertheless, the area was sealed off and no one was allowed near the leak. Days later, concerned locals breached the exclusion zone to see for themselves. Samples were collected and sent for analysis. The results were shocking. A roll call for some of the deadliest chemicals in the world, including arsenic, cadmium, cobalt, manganese, and of course, uranium. Antti Larkonen, the local priest, was one of the first on the ground. There is cadmium and, and very, very substantial levels, such levels that uh, has, uh, uh, according to my knowledge, never measured uh, in, in Finland that it's uh, orders of magnitude uh, higher levels. And, and cadmium uh, causes cancer and uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, not, not nice to have in fish and, and in food chain. This lethal cocktail found its way into the lakes and waterways adjacent to the mine. But Talvibar's chief executive seems less than troubled by this. I think we've been managed to, do, to keep the uranium levels to the kind of natural levels and there's no, uh, no significant, maybe some anomalies that could be detected earlier. And, and uranium is fairly easy metal to treat and, and to remove from the, the solutions or waters. So it's been highly, highly exaggerated. There is one ton of uh, uranium, 1,000 kilograms of uranium in the next uh, two lakes uh, uh, south of uh, Talvivara and uh, most part of it may have been precipitated so that it's in the sediment and then it's getting to the possible creatures if, if there is anything alive on the bottom that it may, may come to the food chain. Raimo Turvenen has fished in Lake Larka Jarvi since his childhood. The rich waters of the lake, which is downstream from Tolvivar, used to provide an income and pleasure for many locals. But now, the fish have all but disappeared. How is this going to affect you personally? Mr. Turvenen couldn't find the words to express his emotion, but was clearly devastated. One third of Finland's territory is made up of lakes and rivers. These vast waterways form an immense reservoir of clean water, unique in Europe. Being interconnected, they are highly vulnerable to pollution. The Finnish people, people who uh, habited this area, they came by boats and these lakes have been our uh, home area for thousands of years. And they have been given food and they have been given possibility to transportation. And so uh, I think it's the basis of Finnish identity. This lake and river system we are now rowing, if they 
fulfill their plans, there will be about 10 mines at least polluting these rivers and lakes. Hanu Haivanen is one of Finland's most celebrated environmental filmmakers, who has long campaigned to protect Finland's rivers. This is still a clean water. You can see the bottom here, this is drink, drink, drinkable water. And a lot of fish here, here and it's, it's like a paradise. But not anymore in Talivar. For me, it's its biggest human rights violation we can almost face in our home country. At the trade fair, a panel discussion including Talvivar's chief executive, entitled Who Believes in Sustainable Mining, is underway. It's billed as open to comments from the public. But when Hanu tries to address the panel, he is thrown out. Also at the fair, the Environmental Contribution of the Year Award has just been presented to drilling company Carty. Ironically, Carty's contract work for Anglo-American, the world's fourth largest mining company, threatens the very existence of a nature reserve. Anglo-American's nickel discovery, much of which lies deep below the marshlands of Vianciapa, a remote part of northern Finland, exemplifies the problem facing the region. For while the mine would be worth millions to Anglo-American's shareholders, the reserve is part of the Natura 2000 network, supposedly the centerpiece of EU nature and biodiversity policy. From her home at the edge of the reserve, teenager Rika Karpanen has been fighting to save this precious wilderness. Rika's Sami ancestors have lived here for centuries. And I was about nine or ten years old in this picture. And this article tells about um, the area there, how rich is it and how, how many different kind of birds it has. Rika's campaign has helped draw attention to the Ankiapa. But it's an uneven fight, a teenager against a mining company with a turnover of billions. Rika took us to where Carty were drilling on behalf of Anglo-American, just meters from the reserve. This Vianqiaupa area is a very wet area because this is mire and swamp all around. So if they are going to build a mine here, it means that this, this whole area will be destroyed. And of course, because this area is wet, all these damages would, would, uh, would go very wide. Rika's neighbour, a Sami reindeer herder, fears it will mean the end of herding in the area. Anglo-American declined to participate in this film, but it's clear that should the mine go ahead, this environment will change beyond all recognition. This is just happening and we don't know here in Lapland what is going to happen. Those mining companies, they know it, but they don't tell it to the local people, so I'm really worried about what's, what's going to happen. And I'm also worried about, because I'm very, very young, I'm 19 years old, and those people who, who made those decisions, they, they are much older than me. And I'm, I'm worried that my, my generation is the generation which is going to carry all those responsibilities of what those companies have made here in Lapland. Europe's far north is still a spectacular environment, largely thanks to the people who have lived there for centuries, the Sami. Whether it can withstand the strategy its politicians seek to impose remains to be seen. <laughs>